All right, I told you guys that we were going to put runners on the bottom of this skiff, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We've got a nice piece of material right here. It's a piece of white oak, actually, that I'm going to make the first runner out of. It's going to be like six inches wide. It's going to go right down the center of the boat, right from the stem, all the way over, and hang over the transom just like everything does. Hang over and cut off is the theme of all of this woodwork, and we're not going to change now. So what we're going to do is uh, process this one piece for the center, but the first thing I want to do is talk to you about these runners in general. Now, I've built quite a few of these skiffs, and we put runners on these skiffs an inch thick at some points, way back, and uh, it's just about like having no runners on it whatsoever. The boat just skids all over the place in the water. It's dangerous, actually. And uh, the deeper the runners you put on, the safer the boat actually is. You don't want to put a real super deep one right down the middle in front of the outboard motor because it kind of gets air bubbles alongside of it and feeds air bubbles to the outboard motor. So what you try to do there is, is put one, say, two inches deep right down the center, and that's about it. And then we're going to put another runner on this side and another runner on the other side. And those will also be maybe an inch and a half thick. But on top of those, we're going to put some two and a half inch pieces that stick straight down like this. And the whole idea of those is to stop the boat from being able to be twisted in the water very easily. One of the most dangerous things you can do with a skiff like this is be in a following sea and uh, crest a following sea, like come over like a following sea like this and then put the bow of the boat in the water and not have those runners on there because what will happen is one side of the boat will be in the water and the other side of the boat will be kind of up out of the water and it makes it want to steer real quickly. We used to call it diving or diverting and it's dangerous, it's very dangerous. So we've learned over the years that in order to make these boats safe, you have to have deep runners on them so that they don't divert in the following sea. And you also have to have spray rails or lift rails, what I call them, on the sides of the boat that lifts the bow of the boat up as soon as it crests that following sea. So that's what we're out to do. They're very, very important. They also line up all the bottom planking because the bottom planking still is not lined up perfectly until we nail those runners on there. Now this is the first piece of wood that we're going to use for the center runner right here. And it's a piece of white oak actually. Uh, it's slab sawn. You can see that the annual rings are going across it in this direction. I don't buy a lot of material like this, but I just happen to have this and I'm going to use it for a runner. It's very good material for a runner. And uh, even though it's a fairly wide piece of material, I'm only going to salvage about six inches out of the middle of it, right down the very middle of it. We're going to cut all of this off and all of the material off the other side. Uh, all of that sap wood and all that bark and all of that stuff will just be wasted. So the first thing I'm going to do is to place six inches of our rule right here, right over the top of this batten, because the batten just happens to be there, and kind of center it right in between the sap wood right here. So we're going to cut it right about here, and we're going to cut it right about here. But my circular saw cuts an inch and a quarter or so away from the line, so what we're going to do is move that batten over to four and three quarters like that, and nail it down right there. Now I'm just going to put a little pencil line right there just so I don't lose track of what I'm doing. And then I'm going to take a four penny finish nail and tack this batten right down right there. Just like that. Now I'm going to have to go down to the other end and do exactly the same thing. And then I'll just kind of sight it straight and tack it down the rest of the way and use that to run the skill saw along. Now you'd think that would solve just about every problem, but it really doesn't because the surface of the material here is not perfectly flat either. So as you run down alongside the batten here, the saw kind of tips back and forth a little tiny bit and it makes the cut a little bit wobbly. And uh, there's a number of other things that can make this cut wobbly. First thing is if that piece that you're cutting off doesn't want to splail off and binds against the blade. As soon as you start binding against the blade in a skill saw rip like this, what's going to happen is the saw blade heats up and it starts to wander. So you have to be very careful about that. And you can hear that happening here right at the very end of the cut. We're going to pull our nails and remove the batten and just dust the piece off a little bit. And now we're going to set a rip fence on our circular saw at six inches. And uh, the only difference in this second cut is, is that we're going to use the first cut to guide the second cut. Now it's straight enough, the first cut, and it's a little bit wobbly, but that's usually at the bottom. At the top, right there where we can see it, it's nice and straight. So we're going to use that for guidance to rip the second cut. 
And uh, it's the same situation as you're cutting along here. If anything seems to be holding your saw up or the saw slows down for any reason, something's wrong. It's either binding against the blade or the blade's too dull or, or there's just something wrong with your setup. But usually what's happening in a situation like this with lumber like this is the piece needs to splail off as you cut it and it just doesn't want to move. I don't have somebody on the other end just moving that piece aside as I cut it. So as I get near the end here, you can feel the saw and hear the saw starting to bind up a little bit. So what I have to do is just stop it right there and just go back and splail that piece that I'm trying to cut off to the side a little bit and open the cut up a little bit. Then I can go back and pull my trigger again and successfully finish that cut right off. Now I'm going to carry that piece over to the surface planer and run that thing through the surface planer a number of times here. Uh, you've seen us use the surface planer before and it's really no different. This piece is maybe a little bit different because it's not perfectly straight and it's twisted. So sometimes when you first get started on a piece like this and it's a little lumpy, it's a bit of a struggle to get it through the surface planer unless you pull some tricks. I've taken some of the lumps off of this thing with a hand electric planer before I ran it through there and uh, I knew that I had enough thickness to do that so I've sacrificed some of the lumber on one side in one spot and maybe a little bit of the lumber on the other side in another spot until it starts to show a little bit flatter before I feed it through there. It's been fed through there a couple times like I said and I'm kind of out to reduce this thing down from maybe two inches which is it's sawn at two inches. I'm really gonna get it down to about an inch and five eighths before I quit here because I kinda like it to be just a little bit more limbo when I put it onto the boat and it'll be a little bit easier for me to flatten it out and make it look nice and true. The last thing that I'm gonna do before I do bring it over to the boat is tune the edges of it up a little bit. Now I'm just gonna use a hand electric planer and uh, I'm gonna go down and check it with a square here and there and all over the place. And I've got a little bit different rolls in it here and there, so I'm gonna kind of address certain issues a little bit in a couple of spots. And I'm just using a square to find out which way the edges of it are rolled here. And I'm going up and down and making a few mocks here and there. They're just reference mocks so that when I pick up the planer, I'll know what I'm doing and what side I wanna take off and what side I don't. So I'm gonna kinda of concentrate on that roll a little bit and uh, the planer does make things a little bit straighter as you go along, so I'm not ruining it as I go, I'm tuning it up as I go along here. Let me get another one in there. And once I think I've got most of it all out, then I'm going to go to one end and make one nice pass from one end all the way down to the other. And then I'm going to use that side to measure the width and see what the other side looks like. And I'm basically going to do the same thing to the other side. That's good. That's it. Now here is our piece up on the bottom of the boat here and uh, it's just laying down there. I've got the stern end of it propped up on a stool back there because I want the bow end of it to lay right down on the boat nice and flat without any clamps or anything right now. So I can just move it around and check it out and uh, I've got a couple things to do. I've got to fit it up against the heel end of the stem right here. So. Basically, all I have to do is take this angle with a bevel set. I'm going to take my bevel set and put it on the top of the runner right here and just sight down alongside of it, just kind of sighting the back side of the stem right here or the rabbit line. And that's close enough because, I mean, I can't cut it any closer than that. That's within a quarter or a half a degree right there, so good enough. Now, next thing I'm going to do is put a line across the bottom side of this runner that's about five-eighths of an inch behind the back side of the stem right here and parallel to the back of this cut right here. Now, I need to move the runner forward approximately a half an inch, so this five-eighths of an inch is going to do the trick. So... I'm going to draw my pencil line across here parallel to the back side of the stem like so. And then I'm going to pick up my bevel set that I had set previously and then draw a line down like so. Now I've got the reference that I need to cut this off, so I'm going to transfer this to a couple saw horses and cut that off with a handsaw. Now that I've finished up that cut, I've moved that runner right back up into position again there, and you can see that it fits right up nice against the after side of the stem there. There really isn't too much to do with it right now. I could probably fit it just a little bit more later, but uh, at this point I'm just going to clamp the very bow end of it down nice and tight, and I'm going to move around to the stern end and clamp that down right in position. And uh, it's got a little bit of a bow to it still here, so I'm going to take my bar clamp 
and apply it to one spot here and just give it a little clamp over to one side until it sights nice and straight. And that's exactly where I want it. Now I'm going to climb up on the boat and take a brace from overhead and push it right down tightly against that runner and push that runner right down tight against the bottom planking. Now the runner's been sighted and it's straight to my eye, but I'm just kind of inquisitive as to how close these two measurements would be right here across the boat from the runner to the side, 32 and 3 eighths of an inch. So we're going to just go right over to this side and measure it in exactly the same spot. And we have 32 and 3 eighths of an inch. Now isn't that something? Either that runner's awful straight well, the boat's awful symmetrical because they came out to be exactly the same thing. So now I'm going to take my handsaw and go up forward and use the very bottom side of the runner as a guide and trim off the very heel end of the stem. Remember, it's that hangover and cut off technique, every bit of it. So I'm just going to finish that cut and then I'm going to turn my saw vertical and I'm going to do a saw fit between the forward end of the runner and the heel end of the stem. Now you have to be awful careful doing this. I've left that runner maximally wide as I can leave it just because that guides the saw much nicer. I'm not trying to trim any off the end of the runner. I'm just trying to trim the heel end of the stem. So I gotta be careful doing that. And once I've gotten down in there, I have to be also careful I don't saw too far down, but it's pretty easy to stop in the right place. Once that's accomplished, I'll just blow the dust out of there. I'll go back aft and I'll give it a couple of whacks with a hammer back aft and drive the whole runner right forward up against the heel end of the stem and now you can see that it just fits perfectly. Next I'm going to take a pencil and draw a line on the bottom plank in itself right down both sides of this runner. Now that line is for reference for drilling the holes for the nails that are going to nail the bottom planking into the runner. So it's very important and once I remove the runner you can see those two distinct pencil lines right down the bottom of the boat. Now like I said they serve that one purpose so it's reference for us drilling and it's also the lines that we're going to use to put the runner back into position when we put it back on the bottom of the boat and go to nail it in place. Now we're going to take an eighth inch drill on high speed in a battery powered drill and we're going to drill two holes in each one of these bottom planks approximately three quarters of an inch on the inboard side of the pencil lines and approximately three quarters of an inch away from the seams between the planks and uh, we're going to be kind of careful doing this. We don't want to ram it through there too fast because you could chip the inside of the planking up and uh, it's not too bad if you chip it a little tiny bit because the nail head's going to cover a lot of that but uh, we just want to be careful and then next thing we want to be careful of is that we drill them as close to 90 degrees as we can. I've also got a little plastic block with me here that's cut off at 90 degrees and every so often I'm just going to slide that up against the drill bit here and just see how close I can place it down to 90 degrees. I'm basically trying to train myself to place in the drill down there at 90 degrees without the use of the block because it's not perfectly important that they be perfectly 90 degrees but you want them as close as you can get them so this is the way I do it. I try a number of them myself, then I check myself, I move down, I try a few more, and then I check myself, and I get a little bit better at it as I go along, and I'm working my way forward here. Now, I'm not going to get all the way forward, but I'm going to get awful close before I stop. Now, I am going to stop right there, because I don't want to get too close to the chine logs here. And once I've got that runner fastened down on there, I can always go up inside and just extend this line of screws or nails here and drill more holes up in here if I want to. So, you know, it's very easy to stop right there. That's what I'm going to do. And uh, at this point, we've got all the nail holes drilled down in there, all the way down for that center runner on both sides and the piece back up on the boat. And I'm up forward here and you can see that it's quite a bit too wide. So what I'm going to do is trim it down, and uh, it's got a few other problems too. You can see this checkup on the top here, that's on one of the medullary rays. And that extends right around and all the way up forward here. There's quite a piece that's checked off up here, and what I have to do is cut all of that off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little mark right here at the stem head, about a half inch wider than the stem, and one on the other side, the same exact thing. And then I'm going to put my rule on zero on that mark and then 10 back here on the side of the runner like so. And I'm going to put a line right up there like that. 
Now I'm going to saw all of that right off or plane it off, but one way or the other I'm taking it off. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I've got zero on my mark, ten on the side of the runner right here. And I'm going to draw a line right up there, just like the other side. And now what I'll do is I'll just move it out of position and then saw those and then I'll move it back into position again. And there it is, our first runner up in position. Now, I'm not going to take this opportunity to paint the back side of it and nail it right into position like I said I was going to do. I'm just going to leave it clamped down there like that. It's kind of training itself right now. And I'm going to move on to the next two runners. Now, I can't tell you how important all of these runners are. This first one, I guess you could refer to it as the keel of the boat. I just call it a runner. The next two would be obviously side runners. And uh, then on top of those, there's going to be deep runners. Now, all of it's very, very important because without these runners with a very flat bottom, the boat would just be skidding all over the place and it'd have handling problems and it'd be dangerous. Now, this one's not enough to hold it perfectly straight, but once I get the next two on there, then that is going to hold this boat directionally in the water really, really nicely. And uh, so at that point, I'm going to get these next to cut out, put in position. I'm going to remove them all at the same time, drill the rest of the holes, I'm going to paint the back side up, every one of them all at the same time, put them back in position again, and nail them into position and fasten the ends down and we'll be done with that operation.